Simon and Horseshoester Audio presents Yellowstone, the series, Minisodes by Anansi. This episode, Snake Charmer. Thunder rumbled across the plains. Storms were becoming more frequent out in the wilds of the Midwest as of late, and Darkstar did not like getting caught out in the rain. What really irked him was that because of the storm, there wouldn't be any help from his Pegasus brothers for this little excursion. Except for the only one he knew who did not fear such storms, of course. Another rumble of thunder encouraged him to find shelter soon. Damn Black Root for spilling his guts to the feds. He's a disgrace to his race for making us having to relocate in this mess. Darkstar turned to the band of earth ponies under his command, regarding them with mild disdain as they pulled carts of supplies across the darkened flatland. Move faster, brothers! We must find a new place to set up our operations before that storm hits! Being a unicorn in P.E.R. came with the advantage of having a higher authority over those unfortunate to not have become a unicorn upon receiving the gift of ponification. Darkstar piously thanked Celestia and Luna for being one of the chosen elite of the race, and not some grunt earth pony or brutish foot soldier Pegasus. Moving from above drew Darkstar's attention skyward. Descending from the storm clouds was probably the only pony from the lesser breeds he respected. A Pegasus with a purple coat and black mane landed in front of him, his menacing red eyes shifting their gaze between the unicorn and a small convoy of followers. Greetings, Brother Stormcharger. Did you see anything useful during your flight? inquired Darkstar as he began to walk after his minions. Stormcharger walked beside him, and in a crisp and official tone began, Not far from here is an old ghost town. Looks like it's from the 1800s, so electricity is unlikely. Though, it should keep the supplies safe from the storm. Darkstar nodded his approval. Good work, brother. Inform the others of the new course, and see to it they do not get lost. As Stormcharger bowed and prepared to take flight, Darkstar added, And Stormcharger? Yes, brother. Darkstar placed a hoof on the Pegasus' shoulder. My condolences about your sister, Bitter Frost. Our new order lost a good unicorn that day. Stormcharger shot a quick glance down at Darkstar's hoof before returning his gaze to the unicorn. We lost some good Pegasi too, Brother Darkstar. If all Pegasi were like you, Stormcharger, then that might actually mean something replied Darkstar as he removed his hoof from Stormcharger's shoulder. The Pegasus flew off to the head of the line without hesitation as Darkstar resumed overseeing the progress of the Earth Ponies and sighed. If he had been commanding the squad that went after Norris, then he and the P.E.R. would be a great deal richer instead of making their way to some shoddy ghost town. The Unicorn continued to walk along the length of his meager squad until he saw a signpost. The crude writing on an aged piece of wood read, Sweetwater, one mile. The town was indeed deserted as Stormcharger had said, but Darkstar quickly found evidence that proved it had not been so recently. There were bones lining the main street, all the way to the large building at the end, which could only be the mayor's office. There were signs of battle in the saloon as well, and the back wall to the jailhouse was completely gone. Doctor assumed the humans that died here were drastically outgunned, judging by the small crater he found in the middle of the street. That being said, the town was far enough from any major roads and inhabited towns that they could operate undetected. Darkstar had ordered his team to set up in the mayor's building, and told Stormcharger to scour the ruins for anything useful. He was in the middle of congratulating himself on finding this new hideout, when he was rudely interrupted by a loud boom of thunder. The sky had grown darker but still refused to rain, 
A fat dark star gave some thanks. He hated mud. Sir, called Stormcharger from the door of an old church. We have a problem. Darkstar did not like problems, especially problems that were the result of the incompetence of his subordinates. What is it, brother? Found the snake's nest? mocked Darkstar. Stormcharger scowled at the unicorn and continued. I do not believe this town is as abandoned as we thought. He stepped to the side and gestured for Darkstar to look for himself. The unicorn casually trotted up to the doorway inside, and his eyes suddenly went wide in shock. The floor was littered with bones, simply covered with the bleached remains of humans, ponies, and an unknowable amount of animals. The meat was picked clean from every inch of every bone, and slithering amongst the remains were dozens of snakes, each one bearing a rattle at the end of its tail. Darkstar and Stormcharger stepped away from the darkened church as the Pegasus continued, It's much worse than a snake pit, sir. Snakes don't hoard bodies like this. This is a lair of something far worse than a couple of rattlers. I suggest we leave now before whatever lives here returns. Darkstar weighed his options and thought of something he considered quite brilliant. Stormcharger, my brother, this is an excellent opportunity. If those fools at the HLF were able to get their incompetent hands on a giant spider, then we should be able to ensnare whatever lurks here. We can use this obviously deadly monster in our efforts to purge the unenlightened. Stormcharger glanced between Darkstar and the church. What are we going to use for bait? Darkstar grinned. What else? Darkstar was surprised at how short he had to wait before his new weapon showed itself. The earth pony grunt he had stationed outside the church was replaced by a large red stain and a bloody trail leading into the building. The unicorn was impressed to say the least. None of his other subordinates had heard or seen anything, not even Stormcharger, who swore he only looked away for a few seconds. All of that was irrelevant, of course as Darkstar now had whatever it was right where he wanted it. There was only one problem, of course. Not dying. Darkstar summoned a small globe of light and sent it hovering into the dark expanse of the desecrated church. Its light barely illuminated anything, but was enough to scatter the snakes. You four, he commanded four earth ponies. Get in there and try not to get bit by anything. His four minions did as they were told and entered the poorly illuminated aisle, one of them tripping over the ribcage of something large enough to be a buffalo. Stormcharger moved in after them, eyeing the second floor of the building incredulously. There were a lot of nooks and crannies in this place where someone could hide, and the shadowy atmosphere wasn't helping matters. Darkstar entered next and was flanked by two more earth ponies who looked absolutely terrified to be here. Darkstar simply looked confused. The blood trail ended a few feet away from the doorway, and something large enough to drag the body of an earth pony couldn't just disappear without a trace. Van out, brothers, called the unicorn. Find our new weapon and restrain it. Something did not sit right with Darkstar about this. Aside from the assorted hissing coming from the snakes, it was too quiet. As if to answer him, there was a boom of thunder from outside that startled the two ponies to his side. He rolled his eyes. You morons. Is it a wonder you even know how to walk you? He was interrupted as the double door slammed shut and reduced the light within the church to a measly sphere he had conjured. As if on cue, all the serpents that were slithering around began to shake their rattles in tandem. Darkstar and his ponies gathered around the center of the room, where his light hovered weakly. This ain't natural, said one of the earth ponies. L let's get out of here. You shall stay your ground, coward, barked Darkstar. We are not leaving until we have tamed this creature for the glory of our brotherhood. The rattling continued to intensify. Sir, whispered Stormcharger, 
Perhaps we should wait for a more opportune time? Darkstar glared at the Pegasus. There is no more opportune time than this! The snakes stopped rattling suddenly and were replaced with what sounded like footsteps that were accompanied by a small tink sound. Whatever it was, it was walking towards them. Darkstar clambered up and out of the bones, screaming, Subdue him! Get him! The earth ponies charged over the piles of bones and snakes at the source of the voice. Storm Charger lifted off and flew to the upper floor of the church. A single rattling sound came from the darkness as the ponies charged in. All six of them began screaming as they were confronted who by whoever was in the shadows, only to be suddenly silenced soon after. The rattling continued. Darkstar's horn glowed bright red as he launched a bright sphere of energy down the aisle. The sudden illumination forced him to close his eyes, but he didn't need to see for this spell. The sphere hit the doors of the church and exploded with enough force to shake the foundations of the building. The rattling had stopped. The unicorn looked up and marveled at the results of his spell. The entire front wall was now a large, smoldering hole allowing dim light to flood into the aged building. How unfortunate, he mused. I seem to have accidentally incinerated him. Such a pity. The unicorn heard rattling behind him, and upon turning around was only able to see the glimmer of a large blade flash coming at him before his world went black. In the dim light, the Pegasus could only see the man who wore a poncho with a snake motif, a wide brim hat that obscured his face in shadows, and wielded a curved sword and a large knife in his hands. Impressive, said Storm Charger from above the grisly scene. I don't think I've seen a human as deadly as you before. The human looked up at the Pegasus and scowled. The many snakes of the room began rattling their tails as he did so. No need for hostilities, said Storm Charger in an authoritative tone. I have no wish to fight you myself, and I can see your skills are much more than a match for any pony. Storm Charger began to walk along the balcony. I have a job opportunity for you. An assassination. It pays well, and you can get out of this charming little... The Pegasus looked for the right word. Shithole. The snakes stopped their rattling. Storm Charger smiled. I'm glad you're interested. The Pegasus flew down into the aisle of bones and bodies and looked up at the human. My name is Storm Charger. Serve me faithfully, and I shall do what I can to get you whatever you desire. After a moment of complete silence, the man sheathed his blades and loomed over the Pegasus. I am Diamondback, and all I want is revenge. This has been a Simon and Horseshoeser production of Snake Charmer, written by Anansi, read by Victor Frost. For this story and others like it, please go to www.equestriadaily.com and search for The Conversion Bureau. Sound effects courtesy of The Free Sound Project and its contributors at www.freesound.org. This audio series is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 license. For more information about Creative Commons licensing, please visit www.creativecommons.org.